are you ready for training quiz two? You don't become skilled in dermoscopy overnight. For each patient I present to you today, give your answers to these questions. What is your diagnosis? And what clues helped you reach that conclusion? How certain are you of your diagnosis? Confidence is a precious commodity in medicine. No one wants to miss a melanoma or skin cancer. With time and practice, your confidence in your diagnostic abilities will increase. You'll become more willing to take that burden of responsibility for a diagnosis upon yourself. Increasing your ability to correctly reassure sure that many patients who walk through your door worried they might have cancer but they don't because you took the time to learn dermoscopy. And the final question I challenge you to ask yourself is how would you have managed them? A diagnosis is only half our job in primary care. The other half is figuring out how best to manage and support your patient with their new diagnosis. A 51 year old lady comes to you concerned about this five millimeter soft red papule on her lower chest wall that she's only just noticed. It hasn't bled and has no symptoms. What do you think? This 62-year-old lady was seen by one of your practice nurses who was concerned about the appearance of this skin lesion on her left shoulder. On talking to the patient, she had had a sebaceous cyst removed from that area 12 months previously. This 43-year-old lady had this 6mm red soft papule on her upper sternum. It had been slowly growing over two years. It was occasionally catching on things and bleeding. This 73-year-old gentleman came with a short two-month history of this pink papule growing on his left forehead. It's soft to touch and there's no symptoms. I often go back and look at a tricky skin lesion two or three times with my dermoscope, just to be clear in my own mind that the colors and patterns I'm seeing is what's really there. Are your answers now locked in? Then here's what I thought and what I did with these patients. There's a long list of possible causes for a pink papule, what I call a PPPP, people with a pink papule problem. Macroscopically, it's well demarcated, quite red and vascular looking, firm and not soft and wobbly. There's a shiny, lobulated surface to it. Could this be a BCC, a pyogenic granuloma, intradermal nevus, or a rare tumour such as an amelanotic melanoma? The list of possibilities is long. Let's see if the dermoscopy helped. Ignore this white artifact, my dermoscope's inner faceplate needed a clean. There's no brown. It's composed of poorly defined red areas and these milky areas in between. I'm not convinced there are any vessels, certainly not traversing the surface from one area to another. There's no BCC criteria here, nothing to suggest a nevus. Common things occur commonly. Despite the fuzzy edges, these are typical lacoons. I decided it was a capillary hemangioma. I reassured her, gave her appropriate safety netting advice, such as, should it change, increase in size, or have other symptoms that concerned her, I'd be happy to review. Without the history of a cyst removal and failing to note a scar, this could fool you. The blue colour is typical for melanin deeper in the dermis, and you could be thinking this is a blue nevus or a melanocytic lesion. The two central keratin plugs give the clue away. After the cyst removal, there's been a remnant of the cyst wall left behind, still producing keratin. It's formed a ball poking out in two places. You could remove these if you wish, but the plug will just reform over time. Note the nice smooth edge to the crater. This is typical of a wide open cyst in the skin. So why the blue colour. It's either due to an increased vascularity with deoxygenated blood or the ball of keratin has melanin in it and being in the dermis shows up as this diffuse blue colour. It was causing her no symptoms so we agreed to leave it well alone with me happy to review if needed. This is not an uncommon presentation by patients. Another patient with a pink papule problem, a long history is always reassuring to hear. There's this white haze which changes a little between polarised and non-polarised light but scattered within it are these short red vessels and some diffuse red areas. There's no brown. Capillary hemangiomas are often taught with this kind of diagram, but I've learnt that there is a wide variety of patterns for these lacoons. Some are solid red areas, some are coil vessels, some have fuzzy edges to them. I was 90% sure this was a capillary hemangioma, but not 100%. She was worried about it, and I felt it was worth removing just to be sure. I didn't have capacity at the time to do it myself, so I referred her to secondary care, who, like me, felt, yeah, probably an angioma, but will remove and it was confirmed as a capillary hemangioma. So look at as many as you can on your patients to build up this memory bank of their variability. This video might help you. Finally, another PPPP for which the differential diagnosis list is long. It's a shorter two month history, which is a more of a concern. What did the dermoscopy tell you? It's different again. When you're not sure, take your time and describe what you see. 
There's a pink background with dots and small coiled vessels throughout. No obvious hairpin vessels, common in warts, but if you thought maybe a frog's pond pattern, I'd give you a thumbs up. No obvious BCC criteria here. If there are coiled vessels throughout, could this be a patch of Bowens? But look at this, the vessels are starting to form chains, or a string of pearls pattern perhaps. Such a pattern, and here's a few photographs from the Primary Care Dermological Society website, is classic for a rare benign skin lesion called a clear cell acanthoma. They are benign skin lesions and can safely be left alone. When uncertain, on excision, there is a typical histology. So, what to do with this gentleman? I was torn between a wart, i.e. a frog spawn pattern, and a clear cell acanthoma. I was happy it wasn't a cancer, which is the main thing and I gave my thoughts to the patient, but he didn't like it and wanted it gone. You may have decided to refer him for a second opinion, which would have been fine. It's on the forehead, and I do occasionally do excisions here, but it would have left him with a scar. I had my cryotherapy gun handy, and he agreed to let me try freezing it, which I did for 30 seconds. I followed him up carefully, and this was the same patch of skin two months later, not a mark left behind. Happy patient, happy doctor. How did you do? Feel free to comment on these cases and my management in the section below this video, I'm still learning. Teach me. Perhaps I could interest you, however, in one of these two videos to help feed your newfound love for demoscopy. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice.